Hey guys, how's it going? So I wanted to share this video with you today. It's about the gender pay gap, which is such a misunderstood topic. The point of confusion comes when people don't understand how they arrive at that figure, the 0.70 cents for every man's dollar. Basically, they come up with this figure by looking at all the jobs women work and women occupy, and then doing the same for men, and then seeing which group earn the most money. Now, this is not the same as looking at Sally working at Tim Hortons and Joe looking at Tim Hortons. They're both going to earn the same amount of money. To say that Sally earns 0.70 cents for every dollar Joe makes working the exact same job at Tim Hortons is ridiculous. So Milo does a pretty good job of explaining this. Take a look. The question for you, should companies be forced to publish the wages earned by their male and female staff? David Cameron believes it will help abolish unequal pay in the workforce, but some argue there's no problem to solve. Let's get more on this with writer and broadcaster Milo Yiannopoulos and journalist and author Nikki Hodgson. Ladies first. Nikki, what do you think? I think it's a great idea. It's brilliant that David Cameron hasn't embraced this initiative, which I actually think came from Labour originally. Um, you know, it doesn't need to be a finger-pointing exercise. I think that's the main point to make. This is just a really good chance to look at how boosting women's earning power can boost the economy. Uh, you disagree, Milo? Well, actually, I think it's a great idea, but not for the same reasons. Um, the problem is that what most people don't realise, the gender pay gap is a sort of myth. No economist takes it seriously. The ONS figures come from broad church sort of averages across the workforce. And when you take into account the different choices women make, whether or not you include um, children in that, actually the, the pay gap narrows to zero. So I'm in favour of this only because it's going to really embarrass these uh, campaigners who constantly um, tell women that they're victims and that they're suffering under this sort of patriarchal society. Actually, women and men get paid pretty much the same um, to the point of a couple of percent. Um, so I am in favour of, of it, but only because it's going to explode one of the most persistent feminist myths of our time, the gender pay gap. Gotcha, bitch! Nikki, it amounts to zero, this pay gap. No, I don't think that's true at all. I think the issue is that women tend to take um, you know, lower paid work, more part-time work. In these kinds of companies, that's not the case. But what it is going to uh, show is how women are not very good at pushing themselves forward sometimes in the corporate environment. And um, they really struggle to ask for what they're worth. And that is a problem for all of us because ultimately that you know, affects the economy, it affects the earning potential of these companies. Milo, the latest uh, figures, uh, percentages suggest that the gender pay gap currently stands at 19.1%, which means a woman on average earns 80p for every pound a man earns. Um, well, the Office for National Statistics figures are based on 1% of an average right the way across the industry, so they don't take into account the different kinds of jobs people are doing, so really they're um, uh, effectively meaningless. But there's a very simple question that, show, that demonstrates why this, um, the whole debate is nonsense and why the pay gap is, is, ridi is a ridiculous um, sort of fabrication. And it's this. If women are working, doing the same work for, for less money, why aren't companies full of women? Why aren't employers going out actively seeking women? Well, they don't, and they don't for some of the same reasons that, um, that you know, women take different sorts of roles and different part-time roles. Women don't work as long hours as men do, even if they don't have children. They take longer holidays. They don't make as much money for their firms. They don't work the same overtime. Um, so we can't really expect them to be compensated the same as men when they don't work as hard. Now, that's not, uh, you know, I don't, mean, I don't mean that to sound, uh, you know, I'm kind about women. Women simply have different um, priorities in life. Most most women want a more balanced life. They want time with their family. They want to do, to do hobbies. They want more time away on holiday. They don't want to put in the, the work that those sort of obsessive, aggressive, um, you know, uh, or, uh, sort of goal-oriented male professions sometimes demand. The law, for example, um, women just aren't really interested in devoting their whole life to work in that way. Um, and the, the very broad brush figures from the ONS simply reflect that. What they don't show is that a woman going to the workplace is going to be paid less than a man for the same. In fact, under the age of 35 in the UK and the US, women are paid more in the same sorts of roles and they're two to one more likely to get jobs in science and maths because employers are so desperate to hire women. Nikki's not generalising at all there about how hard women work. <laughs> no, exactly. I think there's hundreds of women that won't be watching this programme because they're too busy working in order to argue with that point. I don't think that's true at all. What we really have is a social problem, a problem where we uh, expect women to take the burden of family care, to care for elder relatives, 
And so as a result, they often end up uh, working less hard, as Milo puts it, because what they're doing is they're, they're working second shifts, third shifts, caring for other people. What we need is a culture change to allow women to be able to work just as hard as men if they so choose. And that isn't happening yet. But, but what would be good uh, you know, about publishing these results is that it would pave the way for a conversation about how society is structured so that women aren't able to uh, function as highly as men are in some professions. Oh, you were too gentle with him. Uh, Milo, are you suggesting for one second that I do not work as hard as my male colleagues? I take more time off than my male colleagues. Well, I think, um, and um, I am not in any way as committed as my male colleagues. I think, and I mean this in the nicest uh, and most complimentary way possible, you're probably atypical in most respects uh, as, some, as a sort of workaholic um, of either gender. Um, you're probably not typical of women, you're probably not typical of anyone uh, in the kind of work that you do. What I'm talking about is not, you know, bashing women for not putting in the hours. What I'm saying is, in general, women look for different things from life. So they look to fulfill themselves to flourish in slightly different ways. Um, and, you know, of course, if you take the, you know, if you look at the end statistics about pay, they're going to reflect that. That's not a necessary problem now. When people lose the economic argument, they always switch to the social argument, as your other guest just did. And unfortunately, the problem is that a lot of this is underpinned by this sort of constant victimhood complex that women are encouraged to buy into. They're, encar they're given this victimhood script about, you know, whether it's rape culture on campus or pay um, under the average, uh, under the male average. And most of it's based on ridiculous sort of social science studies that don't stand up to the, the ba most basic scrutiny. Most of it simply isn't true. And I think the majority of women don't want to be patronised, don't want to be given special privileges, don't want to be given special dis Dispensation. They want to go out to the workplace, be paid what they're worth. And, of course, you know, if they want to raise a family, they're not going to get to be CEO or they're not going to be get, get to, you know, raise a, raise a, to be a partner in a law firm. You can't have it all. Um, you know, you can't do all of these things. And what really sort of frustrates me and I think frustrates a lot of ordinary women who, you know, find these sorts of debates a bit dull and a bit mystifying um, is that there's some sort of somehow implication always behind the scenes that, being, you know, that, that motherhood is, is, you know, is a bad thing and that it's a bad thing for a woman to aspire to raise a family and to be a mother. Actually, it's sort of one of the most extraordinary things that any, anybody can accomplish and anybody can do. But there's this sort of assumption that, you know, well, if you, if you do that, then we've got to make some sort of special dispensation when you go back to work and pay you more and give you all these benefits and whatever, rather than celebrating the unique things that women can do in society that men can't. He started off that answer, Nikki, by trying to compliment me and take the wind out of my sails. You yes. have a go. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. I've got no time for that argument whatsoever. You know, women <laughs> want to do many varied and amazing things with their lives. Motherhood might be part of that. But, you know, again, if that's such a wonderful thing to do, why are men not bending over backwards to take time off to raise their children? They're not because the culture is not set up to encourage men to, to share the load of care. You know, women, even when they're married and working, do more uh, domestic chores than men do. We've seen these surveys... Um, time and time again and I think it's really insulting to say that women you know might not be as inclined to work as hard or want different things from life there are plenty of women who are hugely ambitious just look at the number of graduates that we have now women are outstripping men they're getting better degrees uh, what we haven't seen yet is is culture change to accommodate and to reflect that and I think the other thing is that it tends to be old women often that are also in part-time work positions but we shouldn't just like leave them to flounder they're often picking up care bills for elderly parents as well as looking after children and the rest of their families. So, you know, I, I just think Milo's argument is ridiculous that women, you know, shouldn't be paid as much because they want other things from life. Okay, Milo, uh, we've been given more time, so you're going to have to work even harder. It's more than 40 <laughs> years since the uh, Equal well, Pay Act. And yet still, it is a fact that women do not earn as much as men. No, no, I'm sorry, it's not a fact. You, can, o you, can, you, can, you, can, only, you can only say that if you take broad brush averages across all industries and all genders and you can say the amount of money going to women is a bit less. Well, it's not, I mean, it's, like, for one thing, it's illegal to public. pay a woman less than a man for the Have same work. Nick, Nick, if, interrupt him, Nicky, go on. It's illegal to pay Milo, a woman. If that's the case, that's Milo, the case Milo, then Milo, when these worked. results are published, they won't reveal anything. They won't reveal any difference. But they're going to. That's the point. The whole go. reason David Cameron is come back encouraging I, it. I, I, didn't want come back. Them, I want them to be published because what they're going to show is that at all stages, all else being equal, the genders are paid the same. Or even what they might show, you're saying the culture hasn't changed. I think your argument's 20 years out of date. The culture has changed, which is precisely why there are more women going to university, more women graduate from university. They're getting higher grades. They're are two to one favoured when they go for job applications, particularly in science and technology, and they're paid more, depending on whose figures you believe, um, up to the age of 30, 35 or 39, it's probably about 35, women are paid more than men. But so whatever gender pay gap you're talking about has already no. been fixed. But it um, hasn't. So it the, hasn't. Good, That's the, good the, news for, the good news for you is that um, you know there isn't a problem anymore, although there used to be, and that if we do release these figures, which I'm very excited about, they're going to prove me right. So I guess we'll have to wait, wait and see. <laughs>
<laughs> but that's not true. I mean, the point is the the gap is there still, and older women in particular suffer more from it from younger women. We shouldn't just leave older women, you know, to flounder, should we? Just because they were part of a generation where no, it was even I'm more difficult for them to get on. I'm making a specific explanation about where these figures come from, and you haven't really addressed the um, the point that I'm making. What I'm saying is that you can you can only create this gender gap when you take a broad brush across all genders, all sectors, all work. That doesn't reflect the different choices people make, and employers aren't you know um, don't shouldn't be forced to pay a full time salary to somebody who works part time. You haven't come up with a solution to that, and you haven't addressed the problem with the figures, which is that no serious economist treats the gender pay gap as a problem to be solved. No economist thinks this is a problem because they realise what I'm what I'm is explaining. Is that male economists which... or female economists? Just to be clear. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, the, where it's I get my most of my figures on this from is for a, from a feminist female academic, Christina Hoff Summers at the American Enterprise Institute in the U.S., who looks at the figures from the U.K. and the U.S. and she does a broad survey of all economists, I'm, I'm, I'm sure of all genders, but my source for, for this sort of stuff is generally Christina Hoff Summers. So she is a, fe a female feminine acad uh, sorry, a female feminist academic um, who is mystified that this is a, this, a, this sort of feminist myth that won't die. Good for her. Uh, Nikki, final thought to you. I just think that we need to see the figures published because then we can start analysing the data. You know, publishing the numbers without any analysis of it is obviously going to be a waste of time and no use.